Well, we are here with John Pyle of BJB, and uh, John's here with me to discuss vent strategy and ways to vent silicone molds for uh, prototyping applications, and specifically like thin-walled parts and, and uh, you know prototypes like this, where you have these you know really thin-walled parts that need to be. Uh, properly cast, they need to fill properly and not get air bubbles and voids in it. And uh, anyway, John was kind enough to sit down with me. So we are at BJB headquarters in uh, Tustin, California. So anyway, John, take it away. What uh, what was the original, we'll start with the original uh, pattern here. What sure. was the original pattern made of? Yeah, this was stereolithography. Okay. Yeah. And this, you've got a platinum a platinum silicone mold, and that's one of those things too that uh, I get a lot of questions about. Of oh, platinum silicone SLA part. How do you typically address that when you get a, an SLA pattern and you're prepping that to be molded with a platinum system? Yeah, I typically like to seal like with a primer, like our SEM high build primer. Okay. Um, also, it, it, you can see the voids and things like that, so I can doll it up to get a real nice master to to cast. Yeah. Okay. And this particular part, so this is, uh, and I take it this mold is for basically one half of the yeah. one half of the part. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, tell me about your strategy for these the vents and sure. what I know we were talking in, in another video about the hardness of the silicone. I know for a part like this, you like to to go fairly firm. What which one is this, and what kind of range do you this like is, to work? Yeah, in? this is fifty TC fifty forty one. Okay. It's about a forty shore A. Okay. Which I like because it has some rigidity to it. I don't like to have a mold box or have to have one, so. Okay. I Good usually need about three quarters of an inch around the part, typically. What's the working time? You mentioned earlier, what's that 60 about? Minute 60 minutes? 60 minutes? Yeah. And then what's the demold time? Is that like a 24 Six to hour? eight hour. Okay. Oh, six yeah, to which eight is hour. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, with this part, when you, and you, looks like you did the uh, splitter board on this to, um, you yeah. guys have these key shapes, right? These, uh, the keyways. So mm -hmm. anyway, t take us through the process of how you would establish your vents and everything on a uh, part like this. Yeah. Well, first of all, your cosmetic side you want up on your okay. when you first make your mold. So we had to do some clay work, maybe some plastic work to fill in some of these voids here, here, and back here. Okay. Right. Um, this is a thin walled part, so I, like on something like this. Instead of using, I did a combination of quarter inch vents and also eighth inch. Okay. Do you have some of those handy? We can yeah. So show for the these are what we sell here. Okay. These have the uh, conical shape on them already, the quarter inch. Oh. Oh yeah, that's. And these are these I've just sanded down, so they're ready to go. Okay. And uh, this is nice because you leave about a thirty second of an inch, so when you go on this pattern, you can get in these little areas, and when you break them off or twist them, it doesn't break the rib off because they have such a small section here, that's where it breaks. Okay, yeah. now, you had an excellent technique. I, I love your, your way of putting your vents on, um, uh, spraying the accelerator on right. first, and that, then putting the glue on that there, helps. and putting, that, that was genius. And for those who have not seen it, uh, I will link to it on the end screen. Not this mold, but a, uh, a similar mold of similar complexity that John does on the BJB channel. Definitely check that out because there is so much in that about gluing vents on and all of that stuff. So definitely check that out. But uh, uh, now this, this is one of the vents, right? Not a- Yeah, so I used, I used some of those, the, the larger, but in some of the finer areas, that, you know, where you have to get close, close to each other okay. to, get, to make sure you get to the high points, that's when I use the eighth inch, basically. Okay. And then, so you've got, <clears throat> let's see, one, two, three, and where's your, your pore, is your pore, your pore spout, which? Oh, yeah, which right you, here. Uh -huh. is, so I, on this one, I just angle it straight up like that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. And uh, any, and that's, that's something that, too, that, that's from a, a lifetime ago, but I worked in a shop where we did some molds similar to this, and we would always have a, a slight, at a rakish tilt there to allow that mm -hmm. that uh, air to travel out. Now, on this part, is this one you typically cast under pressure? Yeah, I do. If, if, if I have a pressure uh, chamber available, I use it. Okay. Basically, if I have the time, and, and I have enough time for something like and this. And yeah. this one, when you, so you're making this part, ultimately, 
this part will be like injection molded with what ABS. Yeah, and, probably. And yeah. on a part like this, uh, what what would you what did you ori you know originally use to cast this one? A uh, TC eight ninety. Eight ninety. Okay. Which has a work time of about six minutes. Okay. I think demold time of hour hour and a half something like that. Now. Also important, I know I was talking to Troy earlier about this too, but there you guys have some uh, fire resistant resin fire retardant, like this. Yes. So, uh -huh. so obviously this is, I don't know what this part is. I don't know if it's some kind of pipe, but uh, <laughs> uh, this, but th I don't know if this would have to be, but that is an option. You guys do have sure. some flame rated formulas for, yeah. um, for applications like that where you're, uh, where the end part might have to be uh, flame rated. Now, sure. typically for a part like this, um, how many how many parts do you when you're making this? How many parts are you to get typically planning to get out of a mold like this? Yeah. So typically, I would say safely twenty five, but I would say maybe fifty. Okay. Someplace in between there. If I was working with a client, I would say safely. You know, we should we should get at least twenty five. Okay. But a lot of times, depending on the geometry, um, you know, you can get 50. Okay. And yeah. then, um, not to, to get too uh, product, <laughs> too, too much down the sales end, but these are incredibly uh, handy that you, you've done the, the, the difficult part for us. Uh, yeah. You guys have these, these vents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, definitely check out on the end screen. I'll link the tutorial where John makes that mold and uses all the vents and everything. But you guys sell them in all the different sizes, and and then also these registration bars, these like yes. uh -huh. uh, plastic because that all that is handy. And at some point, I I, I just got to find the right thing to mold. I will be doing that on my channel. So um, at some point we'll be be doing that. But. Uh, any other specific thing about how you would uh, plan out those? Because you definitely got plenty of plenty of vents in there, and then you're putting straws in these when you go to cast, sure, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you can make sure uh, your all your excess resin is coming up out of those. Right. Um, yeah. So we have the quarter inch straws, and we have the uh, the eighth inch straws as well that we okay. that we sell. Yeah. The other question I know I'm going to get is. Uh, I know this is in the 40, you, you really like that range of 40, 45. Uh -huh. What would typically be the softest silicone you would recommend for a mold like this? I think maybe 30 would okay. be, you know, but um, I don't think you want to go too soft. If you want a rigid part, you don't want to have to have a frame around it each time you make a mold, you know, uh, it's just easier to work that way. So Okay. And when, like you're, relatively rigid. when you're doing SLA parts, because again, that's one of those common things that... Uh, a lot of guys doing SLA stuff run into cure inhibition. So just to rehash on that that part of it, you typically prep these SLA parts yeah. by doing what? I you like do? to coat it with a primer. Okay. I like the gray primer, like the SEM high build primer that we sell. Um, it shows the imperfections. You can finesse those out uh, so that you can get a real nice pristine pattern, which is obviously duplicated with the, from the mold. Okay. So, yeah. And then any other thing you'd recommend as far as SLA patterns go, as far as how much time between making the part versus molding the part or anything like that, I've heard? You know, it really depends on how the post cure is done. Um, most of the time you could, you might be able to get away with like using a silicone with a part that doesn't have a clear coat on it or a primer. I would recommend that you do okay. to be on the safe side. And then you want to make sure that doesn't outgas. So, I mean, you have, it's not still outgassing when you pour your mold. So generally I like to Spent work overnight, let it dry overnight. Sometimes you could probably get away with a couple hours, but I just don't want to have any issues. So I, I you know, that longer is, is better. But, yeah, that is good to know. So yeah. the, this is fifty forty one. You said so the fifty forty one yeah. following that protocol, that's pretty pretty safe. Uh, yeah. But again, always as uh, and I'll link on the end screen. I'm going to also link to the cure inhibition video uh, because when in doubt, always run a test because. There are radically different platinum systems out there that some are more susceptible to inhibition than others. And, you know, again, when in doubt, run a test. Don't assume that all the chemistry is the same. Right. Somebody has an SLA, they can, their post-processing might not be as good as somebody else's. And so it, it could be an issue. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, John, thank you, sir. I appreciate you uh, 
taking the time to go over this mold with me and uh, I will link in the video description to the events and all that and of course the 5041. Um, but yes, excellent information and as far as I know, I'm back backtracking a little bit on this, is there also is the accuracy, I mean that's the other thing you're looking for is you're trying to simulate the accuracy of an injection molded ABS part. So the 5041 is also good for, yeah. you know, we've got all these interconnecting parts that obviously have to snap together and, sure. and everything. So obviously high accuracy there. And this was something too that I addressed in a, a previous tutorial about vacuum degassing because a lot of these systems are a lot thicker and have to be vacuum degassed but the upside is you're just getting much better you know, physical properties and better accuracy out of this than some of the one-to-one -one systems. And if you have a part that has undercut, you might consider using a lower shore A. Right. Easier to get the part out without breaking it. Excellent. Well, yeah. John, again, thank you very much. And definitely check the end screen. Uh, lots of good information there on the cure inhibition video as well as you can see John making a mold similar to this and going through a lot of steps, a lot of very advanced mold making. Um, do not underestimate the block mold because uh, a good properly made block mold will serve you well and produce excellent uh, thin walled parts. So, and as always, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the little bell icon to get notified when I post new content. And check the video description down there for the links to everything we talked about in this video. And of course, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.